Hey, we're really glad that you're here. Church Home exists to help you in your spiritual journey. I wanna make it real clear though, whatever you believe about Jesus, God, life, uh, you are welcome here, you're celebrated here, you're invited here, and we really, really do love you. Our passion is uh, to show you the person of Jesus. He's so wonderful and so amazing. So we're gonna talk about him tonight as we do every time that we gather. By the way, if you haven't heard, Pastor Chat's a real thing. We've got Pastor Chat going on right now on the app. You can download the Church Home app. If if you're not already watching this on the app or if you're watching this on Instagram live, the app is available to you. And there we've got team and individuals ready to serve you and help you with your spiritual journey. Um, these are exciting times, exciting times, no doubt difficult times, but exciting times. We have been talking about what a wonderful world. For those of you that join us often, you've heard me attempt to sound like Louis Armstrong. What a wonderful world, right? It was one of my dad's favorite songs. What a wonderful world. The truth is, in the midst of all the pain and the tragedy and the difficulties and the challenges and the injustices and these things that we're facing together, not only in this country, but around the world, we do need to uncover and rediscover the wonder of this world and all the beauty that is around us. There is still so many things full of wonder all around us. Um, I know this might sound, sound odd, but I actually want you to reference, if you get a chance and you have an extra 30 minutes or so, check out Chelsea's message, The Wonder of the Bible. And I actually think it's one of the more important messages we've ever preached in the history of Church Home and City Church, which is our old name. Um, and you can check that out, The Wonder of the Bible. I think it'll really frame some things for you in regards to this storybook that we always rehearse, review, research, study, share, teach. Um, it is completely inspired by God and helps us to understand his character and the world that we live in. Tonight, I'm going to do another part in the What a Wonderful World series, and I'm gonna title this The Wonder of Life After Death. The Wonder of Life After Death. I'm gonna start by quoting undoubtedly the most famous verse in all of the Bible ever, and maybe you already know where I'm going, John chapter three and verse 16. It says this about life after death. It says, for this is how much God loved the world. He gave his only and unique son as a gift that whosoever, so now everyone who believes in him will never die, but experience everlasting life. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Life. Wow, the most famous verse in all of the Bible speaks about a life that will go on forever. Now we know that our bodies are decaying. At 42, I know my body is decaying. I'm literally taking an Epsom salt bath before every round of golf. I'm like, what? I have become my father. I sit in a bath of salt just to be able to get out on the golf course and swing a golf club every now and again. Um, our bodies are in fact decaying. We know that we will die in this life. But John 3, 16 tells us when you believe in Jesus and you receive his free gift of forgiveness, one of the extraordinary things is you are guaranteed, you are promised life after death. You are promised everlasting life. I wanna talk more about that, but go to one other passage of scripture with me, Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11, and we'll start in verse 13. Hebrews 11 and verse 13 says, these heroes all died still clinging to their faith, not even receiving all that they had been promised, but they saw beyond the horizon the fulfillment of their promises and gladly embraced it from afar. They all lived their lives on earth as those who belong to another realm, as those who belong to another realm. They lived their lives as those who belong to another realm. I'll say it again. They lived their lives as those who belong to another realm. I want us to describe together the wonder of life after death. This home, the Bible says this is not our home, but there is a home and we're gonna go there and we're gonna be there forever and it's gonna be utopia and it's gonna be perfect. The Bible says that these heroes lived their life as if they belonged to another realm, which they did. We'll talk about that more. For clearly, those who live this way are longing for the appearing of a heavenly city. And if their hearts were still remembering what they had left behind, they would have found opportunity to go back, but they couldn't turn back for their hearts were fixed on what was far greater. That is the heavenly realm or life after death. 
life after this. So because of this, God is not ashamed in any way to be called their God, for he's prepared a heavenly city for them. The wonder of life after death. Will you join me in prayer? God, thank you for the minutes and moments we share. We ask that you would far exceed the minutes and average moments we have, and you would surprise us with insight, understanding, and most importantly, with you. We want to experience your presence, sense your presence, see your presence. Thank you for your grace. And oh God, on this Wednesday, we are calling and crying out tomorrow's Thursday night game in the NFL versus the Seahawks and the Cardinals. We are asking that the Seahawk would be the better bird. Help us to beat the Cardinals. Oh God, please. Amen. 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 I would say sorry for playing, praying for the most important sports team in the world. But if I said sorry, I'd be lying because I'm not sorry. And the Seattle Seahawks need our prayers. So, <laughs> so there you have it. I will never forget the first invitation I got to the Smith house. Now, you're thinking to yourself, for those that know, my last name is Smith. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, what are you, are you talking about your family? No, I'm talking about a, another family. They were the Smith family. Now, the Smith family in the church I grew up in was the family who actually had money. And we kind of knew this because Mr. Smith drove a white Porsche 911 unlike I had ever seen before. Now you gotta understand, uh, I come from a family of very, very uh, humble means is a nice way of saying it. Let's just say that my grandmother paid for our Christmas gifts and uh, my dad raised support as a traveling preacher. And so we, let's just say we were not living in palatial palaces, but the Smith family had some money and, and, and in fact, they had more money than I had ever met anyone ever had. And I remember riding in the Porsche my first time with Mr. Smith. And I was like, this is incredible. So the night finally came and we got the invitation to come up to the Smith house on the cliff in Portland, Oregon, overlooking the city to watch the Portland Trailblazers on pay-per-view. Now, some of you don't know what I'm talking about. Back in the day, if your NBA team sold out the arena, you had to pay pay-per-view. Or actually, it might've been if they didn't sell out the arena, you had to pay for pay-per-view. I think it was that. But anyways, the point is, it cost like $15.99 to watch my favorite sports team at the time play a home game. So needless to say, I did not watch the Blazer games very much. And I, I would miss Clyde Drexler and Jerome Kersey and Kevin Duckworth and Danny Ainge and Danny, some of you know, you don't know what I'm talking about, Terry Porter. That's right. The Portland Trailblazers Blazers from the late 80s, early 90s. That was my team. Michael Jordan, if you're watching, you crushed my childhood dreams. Judah, Michael Jordan isn't watching. You never know if MJ could be watching. But yes, the Chicago Bulls, like many of us, destroyed our childhood dreams. And obviously, Clyde Drexler did not win a title until he moved to Houston, which is another painful part of my childhood, but that is not the point. Mr. Smith invited the other Smiths to come up to his house. I will never forget that day. Some of you have heard me talk about this before. We drove to the very top of the hill. It's a butte called Rocky Butte. We arrived to a house unlike I had ever seen. We walked in the door and I was immediately taken aback, which by the way, taken aback should just be taken back. I just think, I don't like taken aback, but that's how we say it here in the States, so whatever. Okay, so I was blown away as I walked into the house. I had never seen a home like this. In my mind, it was a mansion of mansions, right? It was over the cliff, overlooked the city, had a beautiful pool, had a sport court. This is a sport court in 1991 or 1990. This is before sport courts were even a thing, right? And they had a basketball court next to the pool and a hot tub and dressing rooms. And like, I was blown away at a big screen. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about because you know flat screens, but I'm talking about a big screen that had a green light, a blue light, and a red light and it shot up on a screen that was like, you know, this big, which was massive back then. And there we sat, most amazing food, the most beautiful, massive living room on a cliff overlooking the city. I'm watching the Portland Trailblazers probably beat somebody like the Sacramento Kings, who we always beat. And I'm watching this game thinking to myself, I've died and gone to heaven. <laughs> really was. 
In fact, I was so invested in the Smith household and the Smith family, when I grew up, I married one of his daughters. That's how much I wanted to be a part of the Smith family. The true story is that's actually some of my parents' best friends were the Smiths. And if you don't know our story, Marilyn Smith, Jenny Smith, my mom's Jenny, Chelsea's mom is Marilyn. They were pregnant together at the same time. They said, let's have a boy and a girl and get them married. So I first met my wife probably six months into my life in, uh, in nursery. And so Chelsea is still the love of my life. And I uh, married her because I wanted a Porsche 911. I'm kidding, God, I married her for love. But I will never forget the invitation. Now, from that point, that night, I remember driving back down to our pathetic little neighborhood and somewhat sad, minus the somewhat, right? Mostly sad. And I remember thinking like, oh, just to live up there. So over the course of the next several years, we'd get more invites from more Blazer games. And I would just be so excited to drive up to this other realm and this other world. It reminds me of heaven. And that might sound laughable to you, but trust me, my 10, 11, 12 year old brain and body and perspective, it was literally another world, another realm, and it was like heaven. If you're watching this message tonight and you need a little hope in your life, you need a little expectation of good. Maybe you find yourself discouraged. Maybe you find yourself distraught. Maybe you find yourself disgusted with your own performance and your own lifestyle. And maybe you're at a place wondering, what am I excited about? What am I pumped about? Have you ever had anybody in a social setting go, hey, what are you most excited about right now? And you kind of go, uh, 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 Seahawks? You know, and you just kind of can't really come up with anything actually in your real life that you are excited about. I want to anchor your emotion to hope that is eternal and true. If you are just scowling the world right now, if you are just scanning, I should say scowling, scowling, you're scanning the globe looking for hope and you feel like you can't find any, I wanna show you that you have hope in another realm. You have hope in another world. Sure, it is far beyond driving up the hill to Rocky Butte to be heaven on earth at the Smith House. Oh no, no, there is a realm, there is a place. There's a place called eternity, it's called paradise, it's called utopia, it is heaven, and it is where you are designed to be, it is where you are destined to be, and it is your home. And I wanna remind you on this Wednesday night, on this live broadcast, that you are not home home yet, but you will be. So for now, this is not your home. And let us conduct ourselves accordingly. This is not your home. Oh, I wanted to live at the Smith House. I wanted to live at the Cliff House. I wanted to be what it, wanted what it was like to wake up and just look over the horizon and have a pool I could swim in whenever I want. I remember laying in my bed down in our little neighborhood thinking to myself, that would be amazing. My little adolescent brain couldn't even comprehend the magnitude of that kind of home being my home. I think that is actually a fantastic example of how difficult it is sometimes in time and space in this place called planet Earth, to actually quantify living in a place called forever, eternity in heaven. And yet the scripture encourages us repeatedly to include this in our practice, to include this in our lifestyle, to include this in our daily habits, to consider the wonder of eternity in heaven and life after death. In fact, let's go back to Hebrews and let's look again at these heroes. Now, of course, these heroes are people like Abraham and people like Sarah and people like Noah and people like Samuel, all of these Old Testament heroes. And again, the writer of Hebrews says these heroes all died, but they died in faith. They died anticipating and clinging to their faith, not receiving all they had promised, but they saw beyond the horizon the fulfillment of their promises and gladly embraced it from afar. They all lived their lives on earth. Please hear this. This is the most potent part of the verse for tonight. They all lived their lives on earth as those who belong to another realm. 
Do I do that? Do you do that? Do you live your life as though you belong to another realm? Do you let the values of the other realm shape your values in this realm? Or do we get so caught up, so focused, so obsessed, so inundated and insulated by this realm that we barely even consider heaven? Or maybe you're like me, you, you've grown up around church long enough to know that heaven is this abstract kind of random place where chubby babies pluck harps on fluffy clouds. And you're like, doesn't sound particularly inviting at all. I'd rather stay here and watch the Lakers, the Clippers, the Sonics. Oh, wait, they moved to Oklahoma. Thanks for that. But anyways, I'd rather just stay here on earth or there's oceans and mountains and lakes and toy stores and candy stores. I, what is heaven? It's this random fluffy place called forever that really is irrelevant in my everyday life. I have found that that is oftentimes the norm, even amongst Jesus followers and believers. We talk, we pray, we think, and we pursue stuff as if this is forever. Have you noticed that in your own life? It is so obvious in my life. I plan and plot and prepare and I obsess and focus on this life. When's the last time you had an extended conversation about life after death? Honestly, right? I mean, most of us right now are watching this going, oh, it's been a while. Some of you are saying to yourself, eh, never. Why would I think about life after death? After life, after this life, what is there? Isn't this everything? A thousand no's. In fact, for those of us that follow Jesus, now for those that don't follow Jesus or know Jesus or love Jesus or not even sure what to do about church and not even sure why you're watching this live broadcast, I want to say this is the perfect night to tune in because you can see for yourself the kind of unique approach we have to life for those who follow Jesus. The Bible says people of faith live their life as those who belong to another realm. So here's what I want to show you. I want to show you how to live your life as though you belong to another realm. Now, when I, if I said to you, can you imagine we're at a coffee shop, right? And we're sitting, we're having coffee and let me get my coffee. And you're sitting there and, and you're like, ah, Judah, man, I, you know, I love church and appreciate your preaching. Like I'm complimenting myself in this, in this like fake combo that we're having. You know, Judah, you're just, man, you really always preach a good sermon. Ah, man, thank you. you know, since it's my conversation that I'm making up, I can like, you know, give self compliments. And then you go, well, man, I just, I really want to grow in my spiritual life. And what if I looked at you and said, I know exactly what you should do. <sighs> And I, sl I slurp my coffee and then I say, you know what you need to do? You need to live like you belong to another realm. You'd be like, this is the most disappointing coffee I've ever had with a pastor or a preacher. Cool. And I'd be like, do it, okay? Go from this Starbucks and live your life like you belong to another realm. And you'd be like, oh, that was really great. I was really hoping for some real practical advice on life and, I don't know, my future marriage, my kids, my career. You know, maybe you come home to your spouse, maybe you come home to a friend or a roommate or a teammate and they're like, hey, you, you, you had coffee with that preacher guy, right? What did he say? Well, <laughs> he slurped his coffee and then he said, live your life as though you belong to another realm. So what do you think that means? I don't know. It's super weird because I've only lived in this realm. I've never lived in another realm. I'm not even familiar with another realm. I only know this realm. Some of you are like, I don't even know Europe. I just know America. Some of you are like, I don't even know America. I only know Europe. I only know South America. I only know Asia. Like, this is the only realm I know. How do I live like I belong to another realm when this is the only realm I know? So yeah, I didn't particularly enjoy my coffee with Judah because he told me to live my life as if I belong to another realm. I like that word realm, right? It's like mysterious and, and abstract. But I wanna give you three practices, three things you can implement tonight. You hear me? Today, whenever you're watching this content, 
three things you can implement right now to begin like these massive heroes of faith that we think are like larger than life and way more better than we are when in fact they're just average ordinary humans just like me and you. This is three things they did outlined in Hebrews 11 for our admonition and encouragement to live their life as if they belong to another realm. Now, Judah, why should I do that? Because you will avoid things like discouragement, disappointment. We're all, it's, it's going to touch us all, but it will help you have hope. It'll help you keep moving. It'll help you not give up. I did a podcast today with a friend from Europe and he said, what's the key to a great marriage? And I said, oh, that's simple. Don't give up. And I told him, I was like, we don't use the D word in our marriage. He's like, what's the D word? Divorce. He's like, oh, okay. All right, great. And I said, I figure that if we don't say divorce, it'll be really hard to get one in our marriage. That's just my logic. I was like, well, you know, we don't say divorce. We probably wouldn't. But, but if you want to not give up, connect your emotions to where you will be, please hear me, forever. At best, you're going to be here 100 years, 85, 90, I think. I don't know what average lifespan is right now. It's probably in the 80s, something like that. Late 70s, early 80s. That's average. You know how fast that is? The scripture says life's a vapor. Life's like dust in the wind. It's over. And then what? Then you go home. What's home? It goes on and on and on without end. What if you could prepare now in finite, limited time and space for forever? What if forever could help you get through the finite? What if forever could give you counsel right now in your finite, limited human experience on this blue and green planet? What if you and I are missing out on a hope that's been made available to us by Jesus? Whosoever believes in him, that word believes means to receive. Whoever receives Jesus, the superhero of the ages, believes in his free gift of forgiveness for your error, your wrong, and your sin, you will not perish. That doesn't mean you won't die, you will die but your death will be a graduation into a place called eternity, forever, heaven, a realm called home. I wanna remind you, you're not home. I am overwhelmed at the injustices that fill the streets of this country and countries all over the world. My heart breaks at how we treat one another down here on earth. Our class systems, our value systems, what we celebrate, what we overlook, who we marginalize, who we say is more deserving than others and who's more important than others. Down here, injustice rolls through the streets. Will we fix it all? Clearly not. What if we could anchor ourselves to a hope that's called home and forever? You weren't made for death. You were made for life. You were made for forever. So, 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 so. How do I live my life in the finite as if I belong to forever? Thank you for asking. Here's three practices you can employ immediately. Number one, embrace eternity. Embrace it. Judah, what does that mean? Let me explain. These all died in faith. They didn't receive what was promised to them, but they saw it in the horizon. The fulfillment of their promises and they gladly embraced it. So here's what they did. From the finite, they put their arms around forever and brought it close. And it kept them when in the finite, fulfillment was lacking and lost. You ever been there? You ever been there? God, when am I gonna catch a break? Really, God, this is what happens with my career. 
My wife leaves me. My kids are hurting. My... This is what I get in this life. Are you unsatisfied? Are you unfulfilled? Are you frustrated? Are you agitated? Are you wondering, is this the life I chose? Is this what, right? We treat Jesus like what? Our fairy godmother. And we think that God in heaven just wants to kind of sprinkle fairy dust on all of us and give us our wildest dreams. Isn't that what this life is about? And then what happens? You grow up, don't you? And you realize that time and chance happen to us all. You realize it rains on the just and the unjust, which is to say bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people. This life is fractured and broken and troubled and riddled with the selfish, sinful ways of you and me. Are you unfulfilled? Has your dreams become distorted by the destructive habits of human beings all around us? Are you wondering if this is this all that life has to offer? My response may not be what you want to hear from your pastor. It may very well be. I can believe for better days. I can stay with you. I can pray for you. But here's what I can guarantee. This, sir, this ma'am, this dad, mom, uncle, aunt, please listen to me. This is not your home. Don't treat it like it's your home. This isn't forever. So you lost your hair. So you put on some pounds. This isn't home. Don't put so much stock in this life. Don't put so much emotional energy in this life. You know what these heroes did? They embraced it, which is to say they did not settle. Their values were not shaped by the finite. Their hopes were not connected to the finite. Their dreams were not only connected to the finite. They told themselves, I'm going to go home soon. Now, I just want to say this to Christians everywhere. In fact, I want to say this to preachers everywhere. Why don't we preach more about heaven? Because we're obsessed with the here and the now. Do you know that statistics tell us that this sermon on heaven will be watched and listened to by a significant less amount of other sermons I've preached? And do you know why? Because all of the research is telling us right now in terms of sermons that are listened to, sermons that are practically about our everyday life. They tell you to preachers, they'll tell preachers in Bible college, they're in seminaries, they're teaching preachers that the way you gain traction and gain an audience and really, really connect with people is you tell them how to help them, help them with their finances, help them with their relationships, help them with... Nobody wants to hear about heaven. Well, I do. Because right now, I got to tell myself that I'm not home. It's not my home. This is not my home. It's not, I love it. I'm about it. I'll be the first pastor in line with you to tell you God has good plans for your limited life here on earth. But when they tell us we need to wear masks and stay inside because there's a disease killing us all over the world, excuse me while I remind myself this is not all. This is not all. As my country tells me that I've got to belong to one of these political parties, and I tell them I won't, I have to remind myself I'm not home. I'm not home. So don't you settle here. How do you settle here? Your dreams are only here. Your imaginations are only here. Your values are shaped by here. Our values are get, get, get. Heaven's values are give, give, give. 
Jesus says things from another realm and from another realm, he speaks into this realm and he says from his realm to this realm, from eternity into time and space, he says, you'll be far happier giving in the, you'll be far happier giving than getting in your finite experience. Everything around you tells you get, 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 get. And right now, if the economy is unstable, this is, make sure you get, make sure you hoard, make sure you protect, get, get, get. But from eternity, where the streets are made of gold, God says, we have a different value system here. Adopt it and give, give, give. Look into forever. Get familiar with your home. You'll be there soon. Oh, Judah, don't say that. I don't want to die. No, no, we, we. You live to 120, you're going to be there soon. You're going to be there soon. And I hope you do live to 120. You'll be there soon. Have you found yourself longing for heaven? See, in the Western world, we call that weakness. God calls that worship. God calls that hope. Number two, something else you can practice expounding on what we've talked about. You can, you can, you can talk like this. It says, for clearly those who live this way are longing for the appearing of a heavenly sitter. Uh, he he heavenly city, not, not sitter, not babysitter. Heavenly city. And, and, and it says, it says, those who live this way, live this way. It, it actually, in the original language, it literally is those who speak this way. Those who speak this way. So would you just say Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Moses and Sarah and Ruth and Boaz, they, they spoke this way. They spoke this way. Are you like me? You ever talk about the Bahamas? You ever talk about Hawaii? You ever talk about tropical, beautiful, palatial, amazing, gorgeous places on earth? And you're like, whoa, man, someday I'm going to go to Italy. Someday I'm going to go to Disneyland in L.A. You ever talk that way? You ever talk about places you want to go that are dreamy? You, you ever go on Pinterest or Instagram and look at places? You ever felt bad because everybody you know is at those places and you're not? And you're wanting to do yourself and you talk this way? You have a coffee or a conversation with somebody and you're like, man, I can't wait to go here. I can't wait to go there. Why don't we talk about forever like that? I'll say it again. When's the last time I had a conversation with somebody about my home? The Bible declares that there will be a place called eternity in heaven and all who believe in Jesus, his free gift of forgiveness, they will spend forever there and there will be no weeping and there will be no crying and there will be no sickness and there will be no disease and there will be no pain and there will be no racism and there will be no classism and there will be no prejudice and there will be no hatred and there will be no divide and there will be no minimizing or making people feel small for all of us will be equal in his sight. Every tongue, every tribe, every ethnicity and we will come together and we will gather around the one who knows us better than ourselves, the one who designed us, the one who wired us and made us for his plan and his purpose and for relationship with him and we will stand shoulder to shoulder and we will stand healthy and strong and whole and we will be in a place called utopia and it will be better than any human experience you've ever had and there we will be fully alive and we will be alive forever and there will be a new heaven and there will be a new earth and there will be no more sin to plague that realm. And the Bible says that is home for every man, woman, boy, and girl who's ever lived. So in the meantime, on this little earth, we live with a mission. And that mission is to take everyone home with us. Come on. Come home. We're gonna go home soon. So talk about it. Speak this way. Speak this way. Speak this way. Do you have a loved one who's in eternity? Go ahead and talk about them. Go ahead and talk about seeing them someday real soon. Let us gain perspective. May forever frame the fight. Lastly, and in conclusion, how you live like you belong to another realm, you look for a better place. And if their hearts were still remembering 
what they had left behind, they would have found an opportunity to go back. I am convinced that one of the primary reasons in our faith journey that we go back to old lifestyles, we go back to old habits, we go back to old desires, we go back to old things, we go back to destructive things, we go back to painful things, we go back to hurtful things, is be, we become inundated and consumed with only the here and the now. And we look around and we think to ourselves, everybody seems to be having a good time. And I'm committed and I'm a faith person, I'm a Jesus person. And on Friday night, I go home and watch reruns of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air while all of my friends are out and about having fun, doing whatever they want, living for the here and the now. And if you're like me, I remember those days watching my friends thinking I was missing out. So all of us are gonna have those days, aren't we, where we're just like, man, it's not worth it, forget it. I'm going back. I'm tired, I'm weary, I'm fearful. It says, but they couldn't turn back for their hearts were fixed on what was far greater, that is the heavenly realm. for a better place. They didn't go back because they kept looking. The word looking there, we're, we're talking about a, we're talking about longing, imagining, and describing. Long for forever, imagine forever, and describe forever in conversations. It's gonna be wonderful. I know this sounds odd and I'm just gonna be bold enough to say it, but some of you have family members who have yet to receive the free gift of forgiveness that only Jesus offers. You cannot earn by your performance access to home, heaven, eternity. You simply receive it. Your access has been purchased through the person of Jesus. Now, imagine all of your family members there. For I just want you to know that I'm going to be the person believing with you that every family member you have is going to know the free gift of forgiveness that only Jesus offers. When's the last time you laid on your bed and imagine what it would be like to be home? Home. Isn't it funny? I find it funny that we all thought we wanted to be home more and then COVID came and now we want to get out more. So which is it? To the human race, which is it? Do you want to be home or do you want to be out? Do you want to be on the couch or do you want to be in the club? We don't know. You know why we don't know? Because this finite realm can never truly fulfill us. I remember jokes before COVID. Ah, I just want to just sit at home and watch Netflix, man. I'm just tired, you know, I'm tired of, I just wish I had enough money so I didn't have to work. And those same people are like, hey, I just want to get out. I just want to, you know, go to restaurants and go to work. And so which is it? We don't know, we're fickle. This finite realm will never fulfill us. Let us long, let us imagine, and let us describe, let us look for the better place. John 14, three, and I'm done. I've preached long enough. Let me read the scripture to you. The words of Jesus, I'm done. I keep folding my arms tonight and I'm like, I'll stop folding my arms. I quote Jesus to you as we end on this night. And these words mean more to me than I can even express in 2020. Jesus says this, and when everything is ready, I'll come back, take you to myself. <clears throat> so you will be where I am when everything is ready. When everything is ready, I'll come back for you, take you to myself. It's a beautiful verse, it's true of all of us, but it's 
very true of the individual. Jesus is saying when all is ready, he, he means when it's your time. I mean, I don't know how this all works in the providence and sovereignty of God, but he's like, when, um, when it's all ready, I'm gonna come get you. And I'm gonna take you home. Verses are interesting because sometimes verses say things and you need to read them and you need to ponder what they don't say. What they don't say. And um, what this verse is saying but doesn't say. But by saying what it does say, it also doesn't say. It doesn't tell us that there's a time between when God forgives us gives us a plan and and then when he's ready to take us home there's time in between there and friend if I could promise you that this time this lifespan would be without pain I'd be the first pastor to tell you that but as you progress in this journey and as you grow up There's gonna be beautiful days. And there's gonna be painful days. Some of you are like, I wish I could get a painful day. I'm in a painful year. I wish I could get a painful day and all I get is painful months. And between when you are born again and when you're taken home, it's a journey. And that's why we're here as a church, is to help people get through so they can go home. So I'm not fixated on death and I don't plan on dying anytime soon. I'd like to be your pastor for at least a couple more decades. But I'm in pain and you're in pain. And when I see my fellow man in pain, I'm in pain. And um, I wouldn't be a completely truthful pastor if I didn't tell you, and you know by now I am like literally, I have become in my 40s the crying preacher. But um, I want to go home sometimes, man. I just want to go home, you know? But um, I've assessed the finite from the perspective of forever. And I've discovered that I'll be there soon, but I need to be here so I can serve my fellow man. I need to be here. And um, I think sometimes the only way you make it in this place called finite is you hold on real close to forever. And Mom said there will be days like these where you start to wonder, is it worth it? Oh God, is this worth it? All of this pain, is it worth it? I don't know the answer to that, but what I do know is we're going home. hard to explain to you, my eight, nine, 10 year old self in that car, our Ford Aerostar minivan. And we'd start at 76 in Gleason and we'd start to drive and we'd take a left on Gleason, a right on Stark. We'd start going down Fremont. We'd start going up the hill to Rocky Butte and the butterflies would start and I would think to myself, I can't wait to be at the Smith's house where I can, it's as if I can see the whole world up there. Why can't we live like that? With a childlike wonder. As we navigate the twists and turns of this life that are completely unpredictable and oftentimes excruciating. Can we live with the hope that the end is forever? That the end is heaven? It's heaven. And I'm going there real soon.
So make no mistake, this may be a Wednesday to you and a Wednesday to me. But to God, it's just one step closer to home. Heard somebody say recently, I like getting old. And I think they said it because they like the gray hairs and the wrinkles and it tells a story. I just like to say, I like getting old because I get closer and closer to my home. So while we're here, let us live as foreigners. Let us live like people who in fact actually belong to another realm. Can I pray for you? Jesus, I thank you for the minutes and the moments we share. Thank you for speaking to us and talking to us. We cannot and we will not do this life without you. Thank you for your presence right now over this broadcast into people's homes and lives. Remind us we belong to you in a realm called forever, eternity, in heaven. If you're watching right now and you would like to receive the free gift of forgiveness that only Jesus offers, I want to remind you that God so loved this world this realm, this finite broken place called earth, that he came, gave himself as a once and for all sacrifice for our air wrong and our sin, so that none would ever perish or die forever, but would live forever in eternity. If you'd like to receive the free gift of forgiveness that only Jesus offers, I want you to respond right now, wherever you are, just lift up your hand. By lifting up of your hand, you are signaling yourself and God, I receive. Jesus is my superhero, my king, my savior, and the point and purpose of it all. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.